Hey everybody, Darren Rose here. Today I sat down with my very good friend, Alfonso Quadra, and we talked about vendor takebacks, otherwise known as VTBs, and seller financing. Alfonso walked us through how and when we want to approach a seller about a VTB, why this can be as beneficial to sellers as it is to buyers, and what steps you need to take in order to be able to execute a successful vendor take back. Because if our sellers are willing to finance our properties, then we may not need as much of the bank's money, or in some cases, we may not need the banks at all. In fact, Alfonso is going to take us through a recent transaction where he was able to get a 90% vendor take back. Before we do that, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel. You can also hit the notification bell and feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And without further ado, let's get into it. Hey everybody, Darren Boros here. Today I am with my good friend, Alfonso Quadra. And Alfonso is uh, an amazing real estate investor, super savvy guy. I've known him for many years and I'm so glad that he's here today to walk us through vendor take backs. And Alfonso has a ton of experience in this area and also in many other areas of real estate investing. But I'm gonna turn it over to Alfonso and I'm gonna let him intro introduce himself because He's, uh, he's, I'm never going to be able to get all the details of, of what he's done to this point. So Alfonso, thank you so much for being here today, taking some time out of your busy schedule to sit down and talk vendor take back and everything real estate investing. It's so good to see you, my friend. Thank you, Darren. One of my favorite subjects. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't want to get too much into, into the intro. I'll just tell you this. Uh, 25 years in business, built several multi-million dollar companies. Uh, 20 plus years in, uh, as a real estate investor, uh, multi-million dollar portfolio across Canada. And I've been a trainer and uh, you know, coach uh, in real estate for about 14 years now. So I guess that's the, the, the synopsis of it. Let's dive in. Let's talk specifically about vendor take back because I think this is such an interesting, an interesting category for many investors. And I, you know, like it's something that I don't do a lot of. And so I'm so curious today to learn from you on how that you're able to structure these deals, um, you know, what the process looks like from beginning to end. And, you know, if you don't mind, just give us a little bit of background of maybe how you got into learning about vendor take backs and what was your sort of first interaction with it? Originally, I learned about vendor take backs uh, back when I started investing 2001, 2002. And it was this kind of thing that you would read about in books, in real estate books. Uh, of people doing it. And every time I would go about asking for one, people would just say, go to, go to hell. You know, <laughs> like, we're not doing that. Right. Like, why would it, why would, why would, uh, why would someone do that is the question. Right. And so I think the biggest problem when someone's going to watch this video, they're going to get really excited. They're yeah. going to go out there and talk to a, a, a seller and they're just going to come out with it. Uh, I want a VTV. And then the guy's going to say, the, the guy or the girl, whoever it is, the seller, is going to say, go to hell. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, you know, it's going back to, you know, that 17-year-old trying to go to third base on the first date, right? <laughs> it's too Did eager. Yeah. It's an eager beaver, right? 17-year-old. <laughs> anyway, that's <laughs> I digress. Um, so, <laughs> what, um, so when you started doing these, because I know you have a, a large commercial residential portfolio now, yeah. were you starting with these on like, you know, were you having success on them when you were like talking to like buying small duplexes and triplexes or did it really come into play when you started getting into bigger transactions? Yes. Good question. So when I was doing the, 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 the two Z's and the three Z's, yeah. Um, I was able to get away with a little bit. So you can always get away with a little bit of a 20, uh, uh, like a 20,000 or a 40,000. I mean, what I, I'll take whatever I can get, mm. right? On the flip side, once you understand how this works, now in my early 20s, um, the, uh, a lot of the activity that I was doing in real estate were flips. And I was able to flip a lot of properties because I was able to in, in, uh, you know, make, it, make that business profitable because I was able to now understand how to help the buyer buy my property using some of these techniques. And some, was, some of these techniques were vendor takebacks, right? So instead of negotiating with your, with your buyer on the purchase price, how about I lend you the money to help you buy my property? And so I ended up you know, leaving behind, let's say I was making a $40,000 profit or a $60,000 profit, I would leave. I would leave behind twenty thousand dollars in VTB, thirty thousand in VTB, and so I discovered from the 
from the seller's point of view, huge benefits on doing that, right? And so that's what most people don't understand. And you think that's about, I mean, you obviously you've had success here. So it's how you position this to the seller as to why you've had so much, so much success. So you mentioned earlier, you, you feel like a lot of people bring it in at the wrong time. So yes. explain, explain how that works and, and where do you want to bring it in? Where do you want to introduce it into the conversation? And maybe it depends on which strategy and what kind of property you're, you're looking to buy, but run us through when you like to introduce it and how you introduce it. But before I get there, I'll talk about uh, my philosophy on why people do things. Okay. Yeah. And I've narrowed, I've narrowed it down to three, three reasons why anybody would do business with you would uh, buy your product or service, sell you their property, uh, go out with you, uh, marry you, whatever it is. Number one, likability. People have to like you, right? You have to be a likable person. And the only way to become a likable person is to listen twice as much as you speak. Mm -hmm. You see, everybody goes into a deal thinking, what's in it for me? What am I gonna get out of it? Me, 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 me. And so if it's all about you, you haven't listened and you can come off as, you know, like a jerk in a, in a negotiation. A real estate transaction is an emotional purchase for a lot of people. And so this is their baby. And, and for whatever reason, a long time ago, they saw the potential in it. They fell in love with the property and you coming in there insulting people, insulting the property. That's what happens with uh, amateur investors because they have no other recourse on how they're going to ask for a proper uh, price reduction. And so the first part, likability is so important and so important. The yeah. second reason, the second reason is respect. And how do you earn respect? Well, through uh, knowing your stuff, knowing your numbers, uh, being an investor, your experience, the amount of deals, right? And so we have to now show our strengths as operators, right? And now I'm going to back it up with, with examples of successful VTB transactions, because you're not going to do a VTB forever. Maybe you just need it for four, four years or five years until you create a lift in the property. You can do a refi and buy out the, the, the seller. And so you, you go through that by expressing your experience, past deals, what you've done, numbers. Every deal that you make needs to be backed up by numbers. And lastly, here it is. Here's a big one. This is where everybody drops the ball. Logic and reason. There's a part at the very beginning of the transaction, of the negotiations, it's called discovery. This is where I find out all the needs of the, the seller. Number one, how, what's the motivation? Why do they want to sell? How much debt is in the property? Why is that a good question? Well, I need to know if, if, uh, if it's possible for them to do a VTB, right? It's, it all depends on how much equity they have in the, in the property. And so, you know, I want to know how much debt, how, how uh, have they done any, uh, anything creative in the past? Are they open to it? I'm not saying, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to lead with, I want to do a 90% uh, vendor take back. I'm going to know, I want to know, are they just open to being creative? The average go-to for me, it's a 90% VTB, because if I come with a 10% to the table, I have some skin in the game. The seller, the realtor can see that. And now the realtor also in their mind, they, they know and understand where they're going to get their commission from, right? Because a realtor can get in, in the way of the deal. And here's the last one. People don't ask, what is a seller planning to do with the money? Mm. Right? If they want to take, if they need all of their money to buy another property, for example, there's not going to be a vendor take back. Don't even, don't even bother asking when you truly understand where the seller is and how, and you build that rapport between you and the seller, now you can present a vendor take back deal. Now here's the problem. People present it. They just allow the agent, they, they, they put too much uh, of the onus on the agent to just go out there and present it. And he might not truly, he or she might not truly understand how this works or explain all the benefits to the other side. What are the benefits? Well, number one, he gets to sell the property. Yeah. <laughs> That's a huge benefit, right? Yeah. Uh, number two, he gets to defer capital gains. And number three, now he's going to 
depending on what they were going to do with the money, for example, oh, I'm just going to sit in an account, you know, uh, doing nothing or go to a mutual fund, uh, making one or two percent. How about you get a 3.5 or four or five percent return on your money? You're going to get nothing. But now it's almost like you're not only going to get make profit and you're not if you're going to be able to defer those taxes, but you also are going to make a return on your money on a property that you know. Can you walk us through uh, a transaction? Can you, you know, sort of beginning to end and what happened? You know, how did you find out about the deal? Uh, how did it come to, to play? Um, how did it come about? And then, you know, where the, the, the vendor take back was introduced and what the, end, the deal ended up being. Can you walk us through something? Last October, I did a deal, 36 units, 90% vendor take back. The property was on the market for a while. Um, the comparables, you know, comparables are around in that particular area, maybe $40,000 a door. So for 36 units, that's about, you know, maybe about 1.4 million. Mm -hmm. uh, the market, the, the, that, it's a smaller town. So they set the price to sell, like a fire sale. Yeah. The property, the property goes on the market around 900,000. Now, most people are such in a rush, right? Every, every, I, don't, I always tell people, you know what, slow down. This is why I love commercial because yeah. after seven units, everything slows down a little bit. From the first time I look at a deal to the point where I'm actually in a position of negotiations and actually closing the deal, that's about a year sometimes, right? Because the, the property goes on the market, the, motiva the motivation is just not there yet. It was on the market and it was uh, tied up twice and they couldn't close, right? Mm -hmm. And some of the reasons are, you know, small towns, some lenders are scared. They may want the, the, the buyer to put up a, a little bit more skin, more equity, right? More, more of a down payment. Most buyers don't have that. And so deal, deals fall apart without ever even uh, entertaining a, possess, a, a possible creative deal. Most people say, oh, didn't get the financing, it's not gonna work, right? And so uh, that's a shame, right? There's a lot of deals that could be you know, done creatively that just, they just kind of fall by the wayside. The last time the deal fell apart, I said, okay, this is my, this is, this is my, uh, this is my time. And so I went in there and um, negotiated, you know, likability, respect, logic and reason. I have numbers. To, uh, to, to, to back everything up. And I went in with a deal, a very, uh, a very conservative deal for my portfolio based on location, uh, cap rates, everything that was involved. And we put it under contract for about $780,000. Hmm. That's a significant discount. Significant, significant discount. But remember, you can't just go in there with that type of discount. In fact, the seller, uh, from, from what I heard, they had the deal under, uh, they had offers that came in at 850 and he, and the seller said no. And the reason is, you know, people can come, you know, you come in with just an offer and with no logic and reason without doing the work, without really understanding the other side. And you just come off like a jerk. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I was very, uh, careful in the way I, I approached it. And I take my time when I make my offer. Now we have it under contract. I'm, I did get some of those financing challenges where you know my lenders are like, well, we don't know, it's gonna take too long. And so then I, I renegotiated the contract and I came with this idea of a 90% vendor take back for four years. Let me create a lift in the property so I can do a refi in four years. So you didn't even introduce it from the get-go. You basically settled on price first. Yes. Terms and you were planning to finance it basically like through convention. Well, I, I, I knew from my experience. Okay. Uh, I knew that it was not going, it was going to be very difficult to get the financing because for the, what I needed, right. For you could get financing maybe at 40, uh, 40, 60 loan the value. Right. Uh, or I could go to a credit union area, but now, you know, that's a, that's a path of resistance. Uh, and it's going to take longer. And so I came up with this idea of a vendor take back. The seller owned this property uh, since 1980. And so they're going to have a significant gain 
I don't know what his situation is or whatever, yeah. but to me, that's not sexy, right? If I have to pay money to the government, I don't like that, right? So that you can defer. By the way, what are you going to do with the money? Can, he has no kids. He's getting up there in age, kind of wants to wash his hands off of the, off this property. And um, he, just, he just wants to sit, you know, he just wants to relax. And he says, he's going to put the money in the bank. Well, how about I, 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 I get you like 3.5%. People watching this are going to say 3.5, that's not like crazy money. But to the average person, 3.5%, that's, that's a good return when they can put their money in a GIC getting 1% or in a savings account getting 0.5% or um, um, mutual fund getting one or two. How about I give you 3.5 and you get to defer your, 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 uh, your taxes. Yeah. And so he took it. By the way, all this time, I still haven't seen the property. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, so, and so now uh, I make that trip out there. It's just, it, it, the the property is in Saskatchewan, just north of Saskatoon and Regina. I get to the, the, the property, and there was definitely some deferred maintenance, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, some concerns, right? And so... Most people, they try to lowball, lowball, lowball without really taking a look at the property. And so I'm not going to go in and insult anybody, but now I have to uh, get some quotes. And so I get the quotes and then I simply present it to the other side. And uh, I said, listen, this is going to cost, cost me, you know, uh, anywhere between maybe eighty to $120,000. And uh, to get the property to the level where it's going to be, right? If this property goes back to the market, I don't think it's going to sell, right? So this is now me talking to the agents and the seller. And uh, I, I, I want to step in there and be that person for you that can create that lift. In worst case scenario, you'll, you know, if you ever had to, for whatever reason, default, you would get back a property better than how you left it, right? Mm -hmm. Because I want to do, I want to make these changes and I outline all the changes and, you know, I was very polite and respectful and, you know, had my numbers. And um, I said, I'm going to need this property to be at 675. And uh, I'm going to need interest only for the first year. So there's enough cash flow for me to do all the, the, the proper repairs or whatnot. And uh, everybody's like, no. Everybody, like the agents were just like so depressed, you know, because they're like, there's no way this guy's going to take it. Right? Another deal has gone, fallen through. Yeah. Exactly. That. Exactly. So everybody's like kind of depressed. And then I, and then I get the call. He's, he's, he's accepted to all your terms. And uh, that was the deal, you know, 675. It was assessed about 1.6 million. He bought it almost a million dollars under value. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with a with a ninety percent vendor take back, ninety percent. What I like, and, and and this is what I always tell people. You know what? Uh, you have to know what you're doing. And uh, not only was it a ninety percent vendor take back, but no personal guarantee, because lawyers will try to slip that in at the end, and um, you have to you know stand your ground. No, that wasn't in the that wasn't in the agreement. We never talked about personal guarantee, because the asset itself should be the guarantee. Right. right. If you default, essentially he takes back the asset, right? And away you go. So I love your approach. I love, you know, the likability first and then, you know, problem solving and, you know, logic and reason and all those things combined is really how all of the things you're able to achieve in terms of the, the numbers and the strategies, it all, it all goes back to those three things. And that's really what allows you to sort of negotiate as best you can. So uh, I, I love it. Thanks so much for, for walking us through that. Um, I think that it's really unique in the way that you approach things. And I think that it's something that everyone can learn from regardless of whether they're doing a, you know, the onesies and the twosies or whether they're doing the, the 200 or 500 unit building, because it's all the same philosophy when it comes to, you know, getting what you need in, in terms of win-win situations with you and the seller. It comes down to this, Darren. And I'll ask you that. I'll ask you a question. What is the return on investment on deals you don't do? That would be a 0%. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> as long as you are willing to work things out and be reasonable 
you know, the objective should be not to get the VTB. The objective should be to do the deal. And sometimes as you are, if that's the objective and the, the, and the seller has an objective of selling the property, then things can be worked out, right? Like I said, VTB is just one part of creativity, but there's many other ways of buying property that are creative without having to put a lot of money into the deal or, you know, have to qualify through all these mortgages or whatever. You can save that for the next time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Alfonso, thanks so much for taking the time to sit down with me today. We will, I'm going to have you back and we're going to talk creative strategies because I feel like there's a lot more to uncover here, but thanks for walking us through the vendor take back. I think it's really valuable. And I think that, um, you know, it's a strategy that, that I think a lot of people are probably doing incorrectly. And so just hearing you walk us through it was uh, super valuable for me anyway. So thanks, thanks again for being here. We will talk to you soon, my friend. I hope you're staying well and healthy in Ottawa. And I'm gonna leave your information in the description below and on the screen here. So if anybody wants to get in touch with you, I know you've always got things going on so anyone can reach out to you and, and uh, if they've got questions for you. So thanks again for being here and uh, we'll talk soon, my friend. All right, my man. If you like the idea of getting a 90% vendor take back on your next transaction, go ahead and hit that like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and check out my website at darrenvoros.com. With that, I'll say thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you the best of success on your real estate investing journey, and I look forward to hearing your success stories very soon.